So let's take a look at some of those stories in more detail and others that are grabbing the attention around the world in the media. We start with one of the main dailies in Spain. It sums up the result of the election there nicely with its headline, more difficult, referring to the Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez, who in an attempt to strengthen his hand actually lost seats for his party in the country's fourth election in as many years. A BBC investigation uh, features on our website with British Airways accused of putting profit before the planet by flying planes with excess fuel, usually to avoid paying higher prices elsewhere. Financial Times reports on the upcoming flotation of the Saudi state oil firm Aramco. We've mentioned it already, saying the pre-launch prospectus is short of vital detail. Now, the voice assistant Alexa features on the front page of the Daily Telegraph after its creator hinted to the Telegraph that future versions may be able to see and move around your home. You've been very vocal about that one. And today is Remembrance Day. It's the 11th of November. Yesterday, of course, saw uh, lots of commemorations and services, notably in the capital in London. And many of the newspapers, like the Daily Mirror here, are showing pictures of those commemorations led by the Queen. Well, we have Cornelia Mayer with us for the briefing today uh, from MRL Corporation. Cornelia, let's get started. So in Spain, a fourth election uh, in as many years, yep. and this one has not helped, it would seem, in delivering a government, no, a majority. No, it, it hasn't, it hasn't, and we are where we are before. In the UK, we'd say a hung parliament. Uh, the socialists only lost very marginally. They're now at 120 seats. But, you know, their, their normal partner would be Podemos. With them, they wouldn't get to the 176 seats required. The right has done exceedingly well, but they also don't have enough seats. So it's going to be very, very tricky negotiations and quite a bit of horse trading. But this is a story all over Europe. Look, we had it here up with the um, 2017 election by Theresa May. We had it in Germany. Um, it's, it's a Euro we had it in Italy. It's a European story. It's a European story where we have many key countries, as you've mentioned, with, with coalition governments. I mean, France was the one that bucked the trend, wasn't it? With yeah. uh, a brand new party but, created but by Emmanuel Macron. But we will Macron see what the next election in. will bring because the by-elections has proven that not all is that well. But if we refocus on Spain, you know, you mentioned the fact that Conservative Popular Party did come in second, it got more seats, but also what was interesting was uh, the you know, the, the right-wing party, Vox. Vox. They did extremely they got well. 52 seats, yeah. up from 24 and in April. There was a surge to yeah. Vox. And, and, you know, it's, 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 um, they're very anti-immigration. And, you know, Spain is on the Mediterranean. And you always see in summer the ships with the, with the refugees come over. So, so this is, and this is nicely at the end of summer. So, so they, that's a real, that's a real search. But again, we see that, we see that in Germany, the, 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 um, the, the, the alternative for Deutschland, you know, also get up. It's, it's, it's really a European theme. And if they can't figure out how to build a government, they will have a third election in one year. That's quite tough. And, and there would be election fatigue, surely, because when you look at the turnout, I think it was just over 50% yeah. people voted uh, this time around for this election. I mean, the Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez is, is desperately calling on, you know, yeah. those who, you know, those other parties. We have to form a government. This is getting yeah, no, ridiculous. No, absolutely. It's getting ridiculous. And it's, it's, as I said, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's what's the matter with Europe? Because it's in but most the of the But the issue with countries. Spain, of course, you've got the independence of, of, of Catalan of and that course. region. There are so many specific issues yeah, to Spain, specific which are so issues, difficult yeah. To, uh, yeah. to resolve and, and overcome. Absolutely. And I think it, also the way that the Catalan independence was handled was what, 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 what basically ended the last government, the last um, um, sort of more right-wing government. So we will, we will. They will have to come. They will have to. They will have to figure it out somehow, or they'll have another election. Let's now look at this story that our chief environment correspondent Justin Rolat has done. It's on BBC Online. We've also been running a, 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 one of his reports on uh, the, the television overnight. It's a panorama investigation that's discovered airlines, and not just British Airways, although British Airways is named. Uh, they because of something called fuel tankering where they fill their planes with extra fuel, they actually generate an extra 18,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide 
last year alone. And this is an industry that is saying they are trying to become as sustainable as they can. It's a very difficult industry it, to, to get in, to carbon neutral. That's a long, long, in, long way away. In, in, in their defence, in their defence, yes, it's, it's, it's very, I mean, it's, it's, it's an industry that probably will never be carbon neutral. But in their defence, it's so hard to run an airline because it, it, everything is always, now they, have the, now they have the carbon emissions. But when the economy is good, fuel prices go up. So they lose margin on that. When the economy is bad, nobody flies. Well, that's so they don't true. make profits. People will always fly. Yeah, they will, but, but you they know, it's, it's they, uh, fewer, fewer, people, fewer people will fly. You will need to make ch cheaper tickets. It's incredibly hard to generate a profit in this industry. Now, British Airways or, or the um, AIG group has done actually remarkably well in terms of generating profits. But look at how many airlines went under over the last 10 years. Fuel tankering is this, uh, is this issue where they fill up with extra fuel to avoid paying yeah. high prices for, for refueling at destination airports. What they, I mean, what they claim, what they claim is, you know, some of they? it is the British Airways or the, or the airlines claim is there may also be operational reasons so we have to be fair that's what they claim but um, yes uh, the question is how much do you save here the numbers are that they save very little and they they, they put that burden on the environment um, it, it's a hard one to grasp right it's a tricky one because I mean it talks about uh, the practice of, that's done this sort of fuel tankering um, on European routes could result in additional greenhouse gas emissions equivalent to that produced by a town of 100,000 people. And when we're all, not just airlines, when we're all being called on to do more, to do the best yes. we can to reduce this issue of, of climate change or reduce the warming of our environment, this is something that can be done easily, surely. Well, it's something that they will look into, and I'm sure this, a story like this will have ramifications. There will be, you know, airlines will look into this practice again, and that's why one has stories like this. Financial Times. Saudi Aramco market listing prospectus keeps investors in the dark. Um, you visit Saudi Arabia a lot. You, as I've mentioned before, you work for BP. This oil sector is one you know extremely well. Give us your take on this listing because it's been talked about for such a long time and so many want a bit of the action within financial markets, oh, yeah. in the big investment banks well, If you look, the US, all the big investment banks are there. They're all falling over themselves. They're to, all to get falling a bit all of a over themselves. And, and, you know, the thing is, where, first of all, the question was, where will it list? Now they've decided it will only list... First in listing Riyadh. in Riyadh on the, on, the, on the local stock market. First, they thought they might have a dual listing right, right from the get-go. Um, only a Riyadh listing at the beginning makes sense because if you're selling parts of the crown jewel of the country, you need to give the local population uh, the ability to, to, to take some and of the shares. when you say selling the crown jewel, it's only about 1 or 2% that's going to go... Yeah. Yeah, on, I, I on said the selling a part of the crown jewel. I didn't say sell the one crown of, jewel. One of the little teeny tiny jewels <laughs> yeah. in the yeah, crown, but as it it, were. So, you know, it's part of uh, Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince's so-called Vision 2030, where he wants to wean the country off the sole dependence on oil. And for that, he needs money to invest in other industries. And that's why but he by, wants to earn an end. By listing in Riyadh, though, do they not avoid the scrutiny and the transparency that would be required of them if they were to list... Uh, on Wall Street or here in London. Mm. And this prospectus, you know, as the Financial Times points out, it's got very little detail. It keeps us all in the dark about how this huge company, no, probably it, the most valuable in the world, is run. No, it, it's, 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 uh, it's actually, I've read the prospectus. It's actually quite detailed on the company. Where it's not detailed is the number of shares that will be, that will be up for sale. Where it's not detailed is the valuation. But that will be coming out of the, of the book building because there's the, the valuation goes up from the investment banks from 1.2 trillion to 2.2 trillion so they will need to find that out um, and it is quite honest to be uh, to be honest it's quite honest on um, on on the risks you know it talks about geopolitical risks and all of these things so all right. we will see where this goes have you got an Alexa or a similar digital assistant? I maybe? had one and she left quickly. She talked to me. The only person allowed to talk to me in my house is me. <laughs> <laughs> so she's in a, in a drawer. She's, she's in a drawer, switched and off, is, is unplugged. It she kept talking to you or is it because you were concerned about security and what was happening to your data? 
Well, it, that was one thing, but the, the, the thing, it was really that the annoying thing that this thing talked to me. Um, what do you think about the idea that it could actually see, it could actually I start see, to they, move they, around that, your that's home? That's a huge, so in terms of data, privacy, data, integrity, that's a huge, huge um, uh, problem as, as I see it. Uh, but there may be some applications where it's not bad if you think of elderly people that live alone. Uh, it could be good if it sees when, 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 if the person fell or something. All right. Thank you so much, Cornelia. It's been brilliant to have you with us on the briefing. And of course, we 